Last week we did a story about T Magazine, which is the magazine for the uh, New York Times, and they featured a model by the name of Julia Nobis. Uh, now our commentary on that story did get a lot of attention, specifically Jenks' commentary, because uh, he was talking about how skinny Julia Nobis is and uh, that she looked, quote, disgusting. So, uh, oh, oh, I see, throw me under the bus. Oh, like, oh, it was Jenks' commentary. Like Anna wasn't even there. Okay, okay, fine, I might have called her anorexic and zombie-like, and you didn't say those things, but okay, fine, I, I accept responsibility. Right. Um, now, okay, so we have received a lot of criticism for the way that we covered that story. I'm being um, a little unfair to myself because I don't think that I covered the story um, in an inappropriate way. No, no, you <laughs> gave the story, I'm the, I'm the loud mouth who, yeah. uh, you know, uh, went over the top, right? Yes. Um, now, one person who did uh, write an open letter uh, in response to our coverage was Eddie Nobis, who is the father of Julia Nobis. And we actually wanted to read his open letter to you guys so you know where he stands on the issue. I'm sure you guys can already predict where he stands on the issue. And then Jenk will discuss whether or not he's changed his uh, opinion on this matter. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, mm -hmm. Eddie Nobis writes the following. Jenk, I hope that one day, if you ever have a daughter and she is a 20-year-old med student, student putting herself through uni that you can be as proud as as proud of her as I am of my daughter each and every day. And I hope that if she happens to be a couple of pounds overweight, your genes can do that, Jenk, just like my genes made Julia a couple of pounds underweight. Damn. Then she doesn't get bullied online by some uninformed populist knuckle dragger like you. Damn again. <laughs> okay. So yeah, a little harsh, a little harsh, right? On the other hand, I was a little harsh. Uh, and, but he was very specific. If I have a daughter, which I do, by the way, uh, and she's a 20-year-old medical student. Well, if she's not, then I guess I'm going to be all right. <laughs> okay, now, look, I know you're trying to look out for your daughter. Bless your heart. Uh, and you, you know, knuckle-dragger, et cetera. Look, I sometimes literally do this on the show, right? <laughs> so in a sense, I guess I'm a knuckle-dragger. Uh, all right, uh, we will get to whether I apologize to your daughter in a second, but I want to hear more from the dad. All right, so the dad continues. Uh, he says, your co-host, referring to me, tried to valiantly, uh, valiantly to make quite val a quite valid story out of this, but you, Jenk, you completely missed the point, didn't you? What, you, what did you think calling one model disgusting three times in the space of a couple of minutes would achieve? Jank, you know nothing about Julia. She is not anorexic, nor has some sort of issue. She is a skinny kid from a skinny family, healthy and strong, always has been, and like I said, she's paying her way through university by working damn hard. You tried to ridicule her for not grabbing a sandwich during fashion week. First, it's not one week, it's four. New York, then London, then Milan, then Paris. By the way, that sounds amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> twice a year, Julia regularly walks 60 to 70 shows during this tour, plus countless castings, late night fittings, hours of preparation for each show, and yes, after a month of jet lag, long hours and very little sleep, Julia often loses a couple of pounds, which she piles back on afterwards by eating like a horse like she always does. On top of that, she sat her chemistry exam in Paris between shows last time and got a high distinction for it. Like I said, I'm proud of her. Jank, here in Australia we have a saying, play the ball, not the man. It means that if you have a point to make about the fashion industry in this case, then make that point. Don't just simply call some kid names for doing her job. If you are half the red-blooded American male you say you are, then you will apologize. Apologize to Julia, Eddie Nobis. How about that, Tom? Yeah, how about that? All right, how so, about that, Tom? Okay, all right, all right. So uh, let me make a couple of points here. First of all, you know, you know, 60 to 70 walks. I'm sure it's hard, but it sounds funny. Okay, like she had to walk 60 or 70 times. <laughs> okay, now but look, look. You could make the same exact point about me. Oh, did you have to talk all day? No, but we got to produce the show. It takes a long time. Say, oh, no, oh, really? Oh, you had to talk for three hours. I know, I know. <laughs> right. People, people will belittle the the job that other people are doing because on the outside it might look very easy, but in reality it's very difficult to do it. Like preparing the show every morning. I wake up, and I, you know this. I wake up at like six a.m. and I send the rundown by seven a.m. Uh, as was the case this morning. So it's we're, tough. we're walking and we're talking. It's, it's, it's a tough job. Yeah. All right, so it, let's get to the heart of it. Look, yeah. um, did I mean to go that harsh after Julia Nobis? I didn't, okay? And at looking back on it, I, 
The, the mistake that I made is that, yes, I was worked about, uh, ab up about the fashion industry, and I mean every word of that, and I'll go over the top again on it in a second, right? But I don't mean it about Julia in particular. She's doing her job. And you know, I get that you're, you know, as her father, you're proud of her, and I totally understand that. And she's successful, she's doing a great job, and she's a medical student. Fantastic, right? And people say you're body shaming her, etc. Look, apparently she has this awesome metabolism that she could eat like a horse and still look really skinny. Yeah, bless her heart. I obviously would love a metabolism like that. So I didn't mean to attack Julia personally, and if that's how it came across, and I can understand why it came across that way. I'm not saying like if you were offended, which is a classic bad apology. Um, I get it, and I and I certainly didn't mean it in that way to, towards Julia. And, and like I said, both you and her, uh, bless your hearts, right? Now, and then some people also complain uh, that hey, you know, you're judging all skinny people. No, 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 no. Look, I'm not judging Julia. She's doing her job. I'm not judging all skinny people like you shouldn't be skinny. It's crazy. I mean, look, I could afford to be 50 to 60 pounds skinnier, okay, at least. But what I, what I was trying to get at is the, the fashion industry, right? And it's not an excellent accident that they had Julia in that cover and she looks the way that she does, right? What they want is incredibly skinny people. Now, people say I shouldn't even judge based on looks, but wait a minute, we're not talking about, you know, Madeleine Albright and how she did as Secretary of State. That has nothing to do with her looks, and I'd be the first person to say that. This industry is literally about your appearance. Mm -hmm. So, of course I can make comments about the appearance. So I have to, if we're going to analyze it at all, I have to make comments about the appearance, right? So can, let me jump in for a second. I mean, that video was mostly about uh, how the fashion industry will actively seek models that look the way Julia Nobis looks. Um, and that is a big problem within the industry, and I think that it's fair to critique the industry and the decisions they make when it comes to models. But, you know, and. And Jake, I have a lot of respect for you, and uh, you know I don't want you to take this the wrong way. But uh -oh. but look, I feel like you're prancing around the issue, and you're not addressing what you said. And you did say it three times in the video. You said she looks disgusting, and it was overboard. And I think that that took away from the message that you truly wanted to no, get at. No, but look, and look. I, so let me explain that, okay? And I know you call it an apology or not an apology based on whatever you think. And bless your heart, go for it, okay? Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm going to stick by what I mean by that, right? So what I meant is she didn't ask to be put in that empty pool that was drab, etc., and be you know shot so she looks super pale and super thin and with that outfit. Et they made an active decision to shoot her in that way, which I guess they think is appealing. So you and what I'm saying is that isn't appealing. So you feel that the way that they, um, you know made the picture look, made her look disgusting. Yes. But you don't think, okay, I think that it's important to make that distinction because you made it seem like she's disgusting. No, she, of course, look, but that's to, the way in my mind, seemed. in my mind, of course not, but I understand why people would say, think otherwise because I said it, right? So I get that and if you, if somebody thought that I think Julia Nobis personally is disgusting because of what I said, I understand why you thought that. And I apologize for that because that's obviously not what I meant. Okay, but what I'm saying about the industry still stands a hundred percent. I mean, they look for incredibly skinny girls. Julia doesn't happen to be anorexic, but they certainly encourage that kind of behavior on other people who don't have her metabolism. They say, "Don't eat, don't eat, don't eat." Oh, you're oh, you're a pound too heavy. That's it. You're fired, or you're not going to get the next job. I hate that part of the industry. And they think in their crazy planet. That like Americans think, oh my God, like a 5'11 girl that weighs 90 pounds is so hot. Well, we don't find that appealing. And so, you know, if you don't like me saying that, I don't care, because you're wrong. So like Kate Upton, everybody's like, wow, why is she doing so well? Because she's not anorexic. Because we don't want anorexic girls in that as our models. It's not like if you're a really skinny girl, like oh, I, I, I'm body shaming you or whatever. The whole industry is based on looks and, they, and they're driving women crazy by getting them to think that what guys want is girls who are super, super skinny. 
That's yes. not true. That's what the people in the fashion industry want, and they do not represent the rest of us. So let me jump in as a woman who knows a lot about you know being picked apart based on the way you look. It's it's really frustrating because you do get mixed messages all the time, and you know there has been like this pushback toward the fashion industry and the super skinny models, and now everyone's like embrace the curves, curvy is better, um, you know plus size models, this and that, and that's a fair point to make, but at the same time it's a disaster idea to shame other women who might not have like a naturally curvy figure you know oh, everyone please no look look you're gonna make me go over the top again because look really we have a problem in this country that uh, the skinny people are discriminated against that's not a problem we have in this country. Okay, okay? That, yeah, I, okay. I, I, I agree with you on that, Jenk, but at the same time it doesn't make sense to turn around and look at skinny girls and be like Oh, you know, you've been uh, put on a pedestal for so long. Now we're going to tear you down. And be like, that's disgusting. We don't like that. You no, know, no, but I I'm mean? not trying to. And that's the whole point of this conversation. I'm not trying to tear her down. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tear the that idea down that in order to be appealing, you have to look like you're almost sick, right? Like that you're so skinny. Now she happens to naturally look that way, according to her father, etc. And I totally believe him, right? He, of course, he's, she's his daughter, right? But. But that's what they encourage, and it's not good for society, it's not good for women. Now, ironically, I'm being accused of being anti-women. What I'm actually, I think, in my mind at least, I'm trying to look out for women that don't put that standard on them. Look, is there some body shaming of skinny girls in the world? I'm sure there is, right? But that's not the overwhelming problem. The overwhelming problem is the body shaming on girls who aren't super skinny. And that's what I'm trying to address. And look, bottom line is, fashion industry is full of shit, okay? They, they, they're, they're all in their own world and they're like, oh my God, she's so skinny, oh, she's perfect. I, don't make me go further, man, okay? I, I can't stand the fashion industry. And all the models are trying to look fierce. Like, everything they exude from their face is, I hate you, I hate the planet, I hate my life. When's the last time you saw a model smiling? Okay? Because these idiots who think they're so cool in the fashion industry don't know what's actually appealing to human beings on this planet. They think girls who look like they hate you and weigh five pounds are super hot. And I'm here to tell you they're not super hot. Sorry. That's the reality. How's that? <laughs> okay. All right. I look forward to getting in trouble for that now.